With the extension framed, clad and covered, the first space we're tackling is the bathroom. The first thing to cross off the list is the windows. And to help me achieve this, David and Mark from Cotton's Glass have stopped by. Are you gonna have floor to ceiling tiles? No, just to um. <laughs> what do we make them made with the window style and placement sorted, in come the plumbing team, along with my beautiful vanity and tapware from Beaumont Tiles. Chris and his team from Hunter Lining Projects are back again to sheet the walls and hang the gorgeous solid plaster cornices. To achieve the functionality as well as the look that I have in mind, the team are using James Hardy Skyon Fibre Cement Flooring. This was then met with Jiprock Aquacheck on the walls. The walls are lined, set and painted. Next up is tiling. For the walls, I've decided to use the Clay Aqua Structured Wall Tile from Beaumont's. And on the floor, a subway format laid herringbone, which looks amazing. With the walls and floor tiled, the plumbing team are back to fit off the bathroom. This bathroom is looking incredible. The only thing left now is the shower screen. So Cotton's Glass are back for the installation and just like that, we're done. Now before I can reveal the finished bathroom, we first have to head over to the laundry. Just like the bathroom, I'm using these stunning blue tiles along with a custom built linen closet from Groves Joinery. Finally, the stonemasons come in to install the beautiful smart stone tops, which will perfectly match the soon to come kitchen. bathroom and the laundry because there's so much yumminess packed into both of those spaces that I'm a little bit overwhelmed to be honest with you. They're very small spaces but I tell you what, I'm chuffed. I'm really happy with the way we've been able to jam pack in some real texture and movement without being too busy. Everything from the gorgeous organic finished tiles in a square format and a subway format that I had herringbone on the floor to combining the beautiful in trim chair rails and pitch rails across the tops of the tiles which then keyed in perfectly with the beautiful ornate splashback and matched the gold taps and oh my gosh I just I literally, I'm a bit beside myself with excitement in there. Not only from the way it looks, but also the way it functions. 
The vanity has such beautiful big storage, the toilet's tucked away, the gorgeous brushed brass hardware, some call it champagne. Um, it just, it, I love it. I just love it. The two things I love the most in that space, if I had to choose and I really am pushed, would be the lighting and would also be the step in the shower. There's something beautifully decadent about the idea of turning on the huge rain head and sitting under there and relaxing, and then to get out and the warm glow that you feel from those beautiful wall sconces, which to me, I don't know, I feel, I feel like I'm in a day spa when I go in and use that bathroom. Now, you'll notice in our laundry, that there is no washing machine or dryer. Given this is my studio, I have the capacity to put that in later if I ever decided to move on, but at the moment, it's not something I need. Instead, I've chosen to have a second toilet in there, a beautiful big basin and gorgeous stone bench tops so that I can make sure after all my workshops and all of the projects I do here, I have somewhere to wash up and I've absolutely maxed out on storage in there. I have floor to ceiling cupboards in there that Groves have custom made for me and maybe matching the kitchen that is to come so that I can make sure that all my materials and everything I need to do all the fun stuff I get to do at Carrington House can be tucked away out of sight and in their own places. I've been really conscious in the laundry as well to make sure that there is cohesion. This house isn't huge, each of the spaces aren't huge. And so I've made sure that even though I'm packing in texture and movement and color, that it's also not too busy on the eye. So I've connected the two utility spaces by using the same floor tiles, the same tapware, and again, finishing the tile heights at chair rail height and trimming the whole space up with chair and pitch rails, which means I can hang and move art anytime I like in my bathroom and my laundry. Now, to be honest, in these two spaces, there weren't that many challenges for me. However, there were some challenges for our trades without doubt. Neither of the spaces were huge and nor were the entry doorways. I made sure that I kept the door heights congruent with the front of the house which meant that they're kind of tiny to get materials in and out of. It's also in the raked section of ceiling of this back extension. So I do know that the poor plasterers were not fans of mine when they had to cut those cornices and get them hung on the slope. Like all good designers, there was a late change to the design in the bathroom in that after it was constructed, I was standing where the shower would be and I was thinking to myself, it would be amazing if I could be in here on the step and looking out at the sky. So I quickly and retrospectively got an additional highlight window popped in there. So it's teeming of light and ventilation, but at the same time, no one can see in. The bathroom and the laundry, they're a wrap. And next episode, we have one of the big guns in every house. We have the kitchen coming up. So I must admit, I haven't gone plain and boring with this kitchen. We have some color, we have some curves, we have some amazing stone. So make sure you keep watching so you can see the beautiful reveal.